members of Mr. Moore's immediate family, his brothers, sisters, his children, his grandchildren, and all of us who have been deeply touched by the presence of Mr. Moore. Two Mondays ago, Fatima College witnessed one of the most touching moments in its history. I dreaded Monday morning two weeks ago, when the Friday previously, I told deans, I said, we must have a final assembly, us together, boys, staff, administration. That morning was so impressive that a student came and told me afterwards, Mr. Tappin, but well, Mr. Moore is not dead, why did you give him a eulogy? Because too often we think that it's only when someone passes on that we praise them, that we honor them, we show the respect that is necessary for them. That morning, I know some of us cried. Some of us, it welled up in our hearts and our minds, the tears flowed. Because for many Monday mornings, when we just don't want to go to assembly, we were there. There was Mervyn Moore, talking, buffing up at times, rambling at times, being precise at times. Mr. Moore was Mr. Moore. And that morning, Mr. Moore was extremely brief, extremely wonderful. That was our moment together. Today, the family of Fatima has been extended to his own biological family, to the family of his friends. And I know tonight, I, Bernard Tappin, have many enemies. Because there's so many people we just could not invite. My first apology is to Mrs. Hubbard, the Dean of Form 1. When we came to this church to plan out, we were told by the administrator, Sister Glenda, only 800 people. Fatima has 900 plus students. And so the axe fell, and Form 1 can only have representatives here. The pain began. The pain continues because there are so many people who have worked with Mr. Moore over the years and are not here. But those who are here represent that wide circle of benefactors and friends who have assisted Mervyn Moore in carrying the principalship of Fatima College. We rejoice in having you here. And today we continue to pay tribute to him. Mr. Moore, we give you the roses when you can smell them. And the first person to come forward to pay tribute to you is one of our senior teachers who has been here at Fatima for many, many years. When he leaves, like some other senior members of staff, Mr. Moore came at 19, Mr. Brash came at 11. Mr. Brash. Unfortunately, I do not have the gift of words without a script, as Dr. Tappen has. So I'm going to read from my script. Your Grace, Reverend Father Provincial of the Holy Ghost Fathers, Father Harris, Father Lifook, Head of the Board of Management, Reverend Fathers, Dr. Bernard Tappen, Acting Principal of Fatima College, Clive Panton, our former principal from years 72 to 81. Representatives of the Old Boys Association, parents of the support group, parents and guests, especially the brothers and sisters of Mervyn Moore and their families, fellow staff members, students, members of the media, nice to see you, and nice to see Butch Lim Choi as well, and old Fatima Boy. I consider myself very privileged to have been asked to represent the staff in offering some thoughts on our freshly retired principal, hereafter referred to as Mervyn. On the 25th anniversary of Fatima College, Father Tim Corcoran wrote, The hand of God and the guidance of Our Lady have not been wanting in the rough journey over the past 25 years. We pray that they will be with those who are called by divine providence to direct the affairs of the college for the next 25 years and for as long as the college stands as a testimonial to those who provided it for the education of youth. One of those who was called 
and who fought the good fight for the last 19 years is Mervyn Anthony Moore. Mervyn was born on December 7, 1939 at Lockhart Lane in Belmont. From infancy, he revealed character traits that were to remain with him to this day. His stubbornness, which I think even the students know, and his thirst for knowledge, which you may not know. At age three, he wanted to follow his brothers to school so badly that he kicked and screamed until his mother willingly packed him off to Mrs. Pollard's kindergarten and there was peace once more at Lockhart Lane. Soon he was at Belmont Intermediate uh, where after being skipped twice he landed in St. Mary's on a scholarship. In fact he placed 15th in the island-wide examination for entrance to secondary school. At St. Mary's he was skipped to 2A special and in three years won a house skull which doesn't exist anymore but it is a, a, an award given to the students whose exam results are the best at the Cambridge School Certificate Examination, which is now your O-Level or your CXC, at age 14. He went on to do higher certificate, your A-Level, and finally obtained his BA with honours in English in 1966 through a correspondence course with London University. But Mervyn was not all academic. He did find time to court and to marry Zena Acqui. And typical of Mervyn, he met Zena at the Catholic Actionists Organization. Their marriage has produced four children, and three of them are here with us today. That is in church, because Kathy is in Canada. Mervyn's involvement in Catholic organizations, such as the St. Vincent de Paul, remains as strong today as in his youth, and he has been an example to the Catholic youth at Fatima through his quiet faith. Let's get back to his school days at St. Mary's. He was a committed member of the six Trinidad Sea Scouts under Father Toba Valdez, and his love for the sea has never left him. Even today, he would take any opportunity to leave the annoyance and pettiness of everyday life and face the unrepenting winds and currents of the open sea. This sense of adventure, this tenacity in the face of harsh adversity, coupled with his deep spirituality, have stood him in good stead. Life has not always been gentle on Mervyn. He has faced the slings and arrows of outrageous fortune bravely and has come out quietly victorious. Those of us who have known him long and well have come to understand the extraordinary strength of the man. His strength is also physical. On the football field, he is an opponent to be respected and often feared. Even at age 60, he is more than a match for men half his age, as many an old boy can attest to. His approach to playing football, or taming the restless waves, or fixing everything from water pumps to the clock on the stairway leading to the staff room, is testimony to his many-sided personality. The clock on the stairway, you may well ask. Well, one of Mervyn's eccentricities was making sure that the clock gave the correct time, down to the last second. Woe to the bell ringer whose watch was out of sync with Mervyn's clock. In similar vein, teachers who forgot to sign the register were given an unceremonious reprimand in such resonant tones as I often wish I could match on stage as an actor. Sadly, the clock is now silent and motionless, a metaphor for the end of the Mauryan era. On the other hand, the staff was relieved when Mervyn was no longer climbing up the ladder to adjust the ever recalcitrant keeper of time. You see, Mervyn has a propensity for falling on his head. Those are his brother's words, sir, Leonard. The first time was as a young boy at St. Mary's. He was propelled over the handlebar of his bike and hit his head on the road. It was no laughing matter then, I can assure you. His brother Leonard recalls he spent the next two days in the hospital reciting in Greek the Greek lesson he'd learned the day before, much, of course, to the consternation of the doctors and nurses around. That fact, coupled with his eccentricity of shutting out unpleasant people and events and entering into his own world, earned him the name Baz, short for Bazudi, a name which our Archbishop gave him when they were at saints together, or so I have been led to believe. The Archbishop smiles. His second fall was in 1990 while fixing the roof of his home. 
Once more he landed on his ill-fated head. For a terrible moment we thought we had lost him. But thanks to his faith, his strength and help from family and friends like Dr. Henry Bedesi, whose wife is here as acting principal of St. Anthony's. He was back with us. And guess what? He was back on the ladder, climbing up to fix his beloved clock once more. So, the clock has stopped. But the time Mubin has spent with us these 41 years will live in the annals of Fatima as the most successful academic period of the college's life to date. Up to 1981, when Mubin became principal, Fatima had won a total of only six scholarships. In 1982, there were seven scholarships, and we have averaged five scholarships per year since then, including two President's Medals for Mathematics. But Fatima has never been in the business only of academic achievement. Mervyn Moore has continued the tradition of his predecessors, Byrne, Ryan, and Pantin, and has fostered a culture of caring and understanding that have given Fatima its unique quality. Despite the fact that Mervyn is the longest serving principal of a Holy Ghost College in living memory, he has been a remarkably misunderstood leader. His leadership was not the outgoing, public-friendly one characterized by Clive Panton, or the highly organized and spiritually tailored one of James Ryan. It had a humble, self-effacing quality. It was often so egalitarian that the staff felt he was listening more to parents and to students than to them. In the long run, however, his staff learned to understand his style and develop their own style without fear or intimidation. They grew close in a way that few other staffs have. Sure, there were times when Mervyn would drive you to distraction by refusing to listen, by simply shutting off. I guess in his own peculiar way, and his own peculiar wisdom, he knew that everything would eventually sort itself out. Perhaps we were living in the Voltairean best of all possible worlds without knowing it. Now, sadly, too late perhaps, we do. In the words of the Gospel today, and in the words of Annie Gomes Phillips, his leadership was of the shepherd, shepherding his flock along the path of justice and fair play. Fatima today stands among the six top colleges, boys' colleges in Trinidad and Tobago, and from our, the staff that is, from our very objective point of view, Fatima is number one. I can say without any fear of contradiction that there is no school anywhere where staff and students have felt more at home. This is in no small measure due to the man who has helped mold the character of Fatima for the last 41 years. Thank you, Mervyn Moore, and know that you're always welcome to come and get that old clock working again. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Brush. I will now call on our head prefect, Selvin Mercado, to express words of tribute on behalf of the student body. Selwyn, recently elected head prefect of Fatima College. Selwyn. Recognizing heroes too late. 
of awarding honors posthumously too often. Ironically, at other times, it has been over-adulating. Nevertheless, on this occasion, we have assembled not only to celebrate Mass, but to pay tribute to a hero. A hero, not in the sense of superhuman effort or accomplishment, but in loyalty to duty. For 41 years, this man among men has been molding minds, molding the minds of future leaders and servants with a quiet, relentless determination that I can only describe as God-given. For 41 years, Mr. Mervyn Moore has helped to develop Fatima College from its youthful days to the proud, distinguished institution that it is today. 41 years of service. It is indeed a landmark, never to be forgotten. For by his service, he has etched a place not only in our minds, but in our hearts. Mr. Moore once told me a story about the glory days of Fatima, and then engaged me in a discourse about juvenile delinquency and the inadequacy of the contemporary educational system. What was the relation between all this and the reason for which I had entered his office? Absolutely nothing. For all I had come for was some bus tickets. However, even in this was an admirable trait of Mr. Moore. Many a student over the years have breathed a sigh of relief when halfway into the period, just when the teacher is threatening to give homework, Mr. Moore arrives at the door bearing tidings of comfort and joy. For behind the urgency of the matter he had come for, one always knew that either by his own doing or by a bit of prompting from the students, he would stray into a topic of questionable relevance. I must confess that over the years, sometimes under the boarding of my classmates, I have served as a catalyst for such strains. After more careful analysis, I have concluded that Mr. Moore was more likely humoring us than we were humoring him. Those lacking such sensitivity or depth of thought might myopically mistake this as the ramblings of an old man. I would beg to differ, and would much sooner associate this with his willingness to share his wealth of experience for the benefit of others. An unmistakable sign of his down-to-earth disposition, and that of a true teacher and educator. When asked for opinions on Mr. Moore's character by a Form 1 newsletter journalist, one member of staff replied, he has a profound belief in the goodness of the human being. When we look around at the degradation that pervades our society, for one to still hold this belief after so many years is rare. But as many a transferred student, but as many a transferred student given a chance under less than favorable circumstances can testify, Mr. Moore is still a believer. Though he may have been so often disappointed when giving others the benefit of the doubt, his faith remains undaunted. He continues to play an important role in the successes of others. Because of this, the intercall winning, the intercall winning for the football teams the scholarship winners, the Atto Bolands, the Brian Laras, even our successful Scrabble team can all bear testimony of Mr. Moore's support through thick and through thin. Mr. Moore loves Fatima and continues to believe in the potential for excellence from all that are part of the family of Fatima College. So much more, pardon the pun, can be said about our departing principal. But to continue soaring accolades may jeopardize my short discourse into becoming a eulogy. 
To end, I will take this opportunity to share with you some of the words of wisdom from our beloved principal. When interviewed by a budding journalist from the Form 1 newsletter, Voices of Tomorrow, he was asked for advice for us young men. This was his response, and I quote, Get your priorities in order. God first, and everything else after. Develop your talent. Do your work. If you play, keep on practicing. Play hard. If done well, you will be happy. And spread that happiness to others. If you are satisfied, you will spread that satisfaction to others. End of quote. body, past, present, even future. Thank you, Mr. Moore. May Almighty God richly bless you. And uh, we have to thank God that he has contributed in no small way to consoling people, to looking for people, to teaching people, to helping people. All that will come out in due course at the end of the Mass. But the fact is, we do appreciate his work, and we do look forward that some of you at least will be able to emulate him. By that, I don't mean to become principal of Fatima College. That depends on other things besides. But at the same time, the kind of spirit that we have among our teachers is very, very important indeed. And we know that our dear principal, Mervyn Moore has done something about it for 41 years. So we thank God then for his life, his work, and we hope that the spirit which he continued all through Fatima College, because he was there from the time, uh, from early on, in the last 18 years, I think, uh, as principal, we thank God for all that has been accomplished. And uh, as we say in the Fatima College song, strive on. Fatima boys, drive on. We, there's no question of stopping and saying we have done enough. There's never enough. And with all the various changes in the world that we have today, we have to be stronger than ever in our Catholic faith and in the, the, our belief in Jesus Christ. And finally, I commend Mervyn in a special way to our Lady of Fatima and to all of you, teachers, staff, all those connected in any way with Fatima College. It was very providential, I would say, that the, the college was placed under the guidance of Our Lady of Fatima. And we thank God for that, for the way in which she has continued to show unto us the blessed fruit of her womb, Jesus, to whom be glory, praise, and thanksgiving forever and ever. Amen. as from the Archbishop of Port of Spain, this little letter, for which I have given him the original. <coughs> Dear Mr. Moore, it is my distinct pleasure and privilege to greet you as you come to the end of a long and illustrious career in the teaching profession. <coughs> Having taught you myself at St. Mary's College, it was very grat gratifying to see you continue in the teaching line. For whether we teach at Fatima or St. Mary's, we are still trying 
to inculcate the highest ideals into the minds of our students. I'm sure that like all of us, you have experienced heights and depths. But through it all, you have struggled manfully and have set a sterling example of loyalty and dedication. I thank you for what you have been to all of us, for the world badly needs role models. May your Catholic faith, which has shone, shone so brightly over all these years, continue to guide you and keep you. Yours devotedly, in Christ's love, Anthony Pante. Now call on the man of the moment to address us, Mr. Moore. Friends all, I had problems writing out something. I was trying to start it eventually this morning. I got through about a page. I still will read that, you know. But it reached a stage where you felt the mind was not gripping with the problem. It was not grasping the whole thing. So anyway, I... I have the ideas of what I want to say. I need glasses too. Please. That 18 years have passed since being principal is a mystery and a constant reminder of the miracle of life. That 41 years have flown by like the second hand of the clock, is bewildering. But it took place, and I came to know Fatima College with Father Ryan, the priests, prefects, and lay staff. And I was made welcome into this wonderful family as a young man fresh out of school. As a young teacher, I remember, I think it was Clyde Burley, or it could have been his brother, Paul, asking what my feelings were if I were asked to be principal or some such, or given some such position. And my answer was, never happen. But the change to dean, to vice principal, and finally, when Clive Pantin told me he wanted me to be principal, it all occurred. And when Father Pedro, deceased, 
after my interview with the board, commented on my answer to one question asked of me. There was the realization that I had a part to play, a very important part. That part could not have been played without the help of so many over the years. I risk leaving out names, but some must be called for the names of are like members of the family and they spring to mind. The early days of Craigwell and Cuthbert and Van Stewart, and I'm talking here mainly to the older ones who remember those days, and Williams and Julian and Sosa and Father Curtin and Father Corcoran and Father Pantin and Father Keegan and Father Fafa and the prefects all part of that family team that today that today has a football match every Friday and that's the question of the family team that Fatima is I always when you know the question of becoming principal came to came in my, on, in my path I said how could I ever fit into the shoes of Father Ryan, Mr. Pantin, and Father Byrne before that. Because Father Byrne used to teach me religion in Form 6 when he came to St. Mary's. Then I knew Father Ryan, and of course, I worked and played with Mr. Pantin, the Clive Pantin. So I felt no way I could really live up to what these men have given to Fatima College. So when I listen to what is all that is being said, I wonder, is this, that the same Mervyn Moore they're talking about? I really wanted it had me bewildered about, about this, you know, right? Of course, I have seen things happen, and I've been proud of Fatima College. I love, for example, when Annie tells me I want you to drop the boys on retreat to Memisa, to Emmaus, or we're going up to the mount. In fact, I'll give you one story on the mount that happened to me not so long ago. So I wasn't that young, and I was with a Form 5 class. And the one part of the retreat is a hike. We go up the mountain, up to the crest, and we go around, and we come back down. Of course, they start off, they form five, they're all asserting themselves, they're all saying, well, we could do this in no time flat. Gradually, they start to spread out a little bit. And one fellow remained behind. One fellow that even vomited and so on in the pressure. But one fellow remained behind, and I was trying to, you know, get him to go on. And he said to me, I'm getting dizzy. I said, what happened, you sick? He said, well, I had an operation during, it was somewhere in October of, the, of last year. So I had an operation during the holidays on my heart. I had a hole in the heart. And I immediately said to him, you sit down right there. You don't move. And I, I then ran on to tell them, don't expect us to be going back. And came back down with him. Well, as, as we came down, Everything was all right. But that tells you what I find is good, what is beautiful about dealing with these young people, being able to help them, being able to even merge with them in some way in their lives and in their desires, in their wishes, and trying to point it in a way in which we can feel that happiness will be theirs in this life and the life to come. Today, of course, I should be just thanking, I know that, thanking everybody, thanking God, of course, first of all, as I try to do every morning, the first thing, thanking God for the life He has given me, for the health that He has given me, that I've been able to, to go on for the length of time that I've gone on, and still play a little football match on a Friday evening, right? So, it stands for everyone. And when I think back on those who have made that kind of life possible, you know, it, it's fantastic. 
is really something that I, you know, I, I remember. Of course, for His grace was the one who probably taught me to row. Not only just to swim to possibly, possibly right? Because I was, he was in charge of recruits when I joined the Scouts. And that was his part of helping me to get into the run of things. Of course, if I was, and I don't remember that part about talking Greek, I don't know nothing about that, right? If it was Greek I was speaking, then it was the Greek that His Grace had taught me, right? Because only later on I came under Father Harkins. You see, so it's a whole process of development that I have been blessed with. I consider myself blessed, you know. You see, even when I fell on my head, right, and it's, I don't know, it was, it, I was not up no roof, you know. I, I, I don't know where I was actually, but <laughs> I don't think I was on top of the roof. But even when I fell on my head, um, and, and also had a burst artery, you know, it was a double thing there, you know, the, the, the skull was cracked, and there was a burst artery also. And the doctors had said, well, you have two choices. One choice is death, and the other choice being a vegetable. Those were the two choices that I was given. And when I spoke to Dr. Bidesi, and he asked me, who am I? He's asking him, you know, I said, you are, you are Bidesi? And he hugged me and he said, it is a miracle. So I can say yes, that I have been phenomenally blessed by God. And I thank God for that. And I thank God for the chance I have been given to serve and to help young people, maybe to have a little bit of that love for God. I can give you, I can help you in that way. That's important because that's where, it's only in that that happiness lies. Only in love and first of all love of God. Only in that. And if I have sent that or given that message to you in your lives, I thank God for that. Thank you very much. And may God bless you. Three cheers for Mr. Moore. Hip, hip, hip. I'm sure it won't be the last time I will sing the college song. I don't know, this morning I was coming down and all I was singing was Latin, you know. All the credo and all kind of thing I was singing, that was the only thing in my mind at the time. Well, Ray Holman said I used to sing in what key? I'm trying to remember what key he said I used to sing in. <laughs> Fatima boys come out from 